lucky in players. He won Wimbledon. But he said, I used to like going down to Rome. They always rooted against me down there. He liked that, huh? Yeah, he said, I loved it because I'd fight, and I'd fight, and I'd win their championship, and I'd throw my arms up, and they'd applaud finally. <laughs> How about the 1980 Wimbledon? McEnroe against Borg, the finals. John walked down on the court to booze. Can you imagine that? Ma the match hadn't begun. He'd been a bad guy. He'd acted up. And by the end of that magnificent five-setter, the famous Battle of 1860, fourth set tiebreak, they cheered the winner, Borg, when he walked out to receive the trophy. And when John went to pick up his little, the, the little medal for runner-up, they cheered him. To my mind, I still remember it. Remember that they cheered him even more. It was a great match. I remember a lovely moment from that clip. I flew back on the same plane as John and John Sr. The next day from Wimbledon, they were up in first class, and I went to visit them when we were about an hour into the flight. John was sound asleep, and Mr. McEnroe had a pile of the British papers, just a pile. God, that's oh, God. Disgusting. Another forehand betrays McEnroe. For those of you who joined us to watch Fishing Hole, please stay with us as soon as this match is over. And we figure on about another 15 to 20 minutes, and it's going to be too dark to continue playing, but we will join that show in progress. Carol. Clearly, you're not going to see the end of this match because it's not going to be finished tonight, but join us tomorrow because you will see the rest of the match in its entirety during our telecast. Game point. to do this is a big game for McEnroe big game for both of them because if Lendl can get another break here two breaks going to represent too much of a hurdle for McEnroe to come back so I'm sure they both realize how important this one is John wants so badly to get into the net that he was still running in as he hit that backhand. You have to accept the fact you're going to make some mistakes like that. They 
have been playing for over two and a half hours. That doesn't include the time they spent in the locker room waiting for the rain to stop. Deuce. First set in the tiebreaker to McEnroe, second set in the tiebreaker to Lendl. Two games to love for Lendl in the third set. And this is break point for a second break in the third set for Lendl. That was John's tenth forehand error. No winners off of that side. To my mind, that's what's really been hurting lately. Lendl has broken. Three games to love. He leads in set number three. We're at one set all in this round of 16 match. See, that's what's making the difference right here. 73% first serves. Call that three out of four for Lendl. There's not much you can do when you serve, when he serves that well. McEnroe, on the other hand, stayed about constant. Second set, Mary, a set point, uh, the passing shot from Lendl, altercation, McEnroe got involved. It has never affected him in the past, in my opinion. Do you think it affected the this match? I really, I still go back to that 3-3 volley. John was just sitting right on top of the net when he blew that. I think that was the most important point of the whole thing. But he was points. He, John was points away from being two sets up. And of course that's got to affect you. It's got to deflate you a little bit. Remember at four games or love 30, he was just two points away from serving for the set. And at that point he was serving better than he, than he is now. Would almost certainly have won it. John had a huge double fault as well in that tie break, 5-3. And Lendl, who was making a lot of errors in that first set, has really tidied things up. So you put that all together, <laughs> and you've got a runaway third set. Yeah, well he, it's easy for him to tie them together when other things change. More particularly, his confidence. His nerves have gone. I mean, he doesn't have nerves at this point. Standing volley from McEnroe. The topspin lob is over his head. He gets to it. A game effort by Lendl to track it down, but no way. I was trying to say about the nerves, or that if there are any nerves in Lendl's body, now they're working for him, not against him. There you go. to love for Lendl and you can be sure that when this set is over they'll call it for the night here in Paris. It's 9.09 in the evening. 
you can make a case for stopping the match right now. It's getting hard to pick serves and volleys. And there's really very little light left in the sky. Lendelman, catch yourself. 